Ooh. <laughs> well, that's a first. I haven't seen her do that before. I think she might have been sleeping. I very rudely woke her up. Hi there. Uh, today I was in the middle of doing some yard work and I went in the house to grab something and I thought, you know, I have several people who've inboxed me on Instagram and who have also um, sent messages on YouTube and who have um, commented on YouTube asking when I'm going to start making videos again. I've been breeding tarantulas and I wanted to focus on that and try to um, give that all of my attention and I just have not had time. That's at least what I've been telling myself. So um, I decided that in the middle of all of this yard work I could probably fit in an intro and let you know that I'm gonna try to put out some videos even if the content is not uh, deep or <laughs> educational although I do have lots of ideas for those types of videos I just have not given myself a chance to create them and also um, I do have a video about breeding tarantulas that I was planning to come up out with several months ago and I have a lot of participants who um, helped me with that but I still didn't feel like I had enough experience and so now after breeding for several months I think that I have a lot more to add to that video so that is still pending I'll be back in a few minutes got a bit of a surprise here um, toot who is actually my first LP, has molted into a mature male. And I always thought Toot was going to be female, but I think that just came from my inexperience sexing tarantula molts during the beginning of the hobby. So, um, yep, <laughs> Toot is a boy. And you can see down here in Toot's terrarium, I'm going to zoom in and you'll see all the urticating hair that has been kicked. That's what all of that is. I know that's really fuzzy, but you can see the difference in the substrate. Incredible, huh? Just not a place <laughs> I want to reach my hands anytime soon. So, probably want to wear gloves, huh? Anyway, there's Toot. And Toot is actually not very big. I expected you know, maybe his legs are, but his body, he's not that big. Uh, maybe, he's, like I said, his legs are all stretched out. He, eh, maybe he's six inches or so, but he, my other LP, uh, Peekaboo, she is quite large. Her body, her legs are not quite as long, so when I saw, saw Toot, I thought, hmm, that one looks a little leggy. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a male, and then I check back later, and sure enough. So there's one bit of news here. Okay, the tarantula that is in this enclosure is named Cookie. <clears throat> I took some time over the last several months when I wasn't making videos to name all of my tarantulas. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat is dry. I um, know there's a lot of controversy. I see it sometimes. Uh, people arguing and sometimes someone will post something on the internet talking about how, you know, do you name your tarantulas or do you not? And it's one of those things that honestly I don't, <coughs> excuse me, I don't care about. Like, I don't think that it's something that I would judge somebody by. It doesn't make them any less um, of a serious, uh person. I mean, you could have a, a scientist who is, um, you know, I'm probably inhaling some hair. <coughs> oh, from, uh, I bet you it's from Toot. Anyway, what I was saying is that I personally, my, this is my opinion, but I do not think that it diminishes a person's expertise or experience or anything if they choose to name their tarantulas. It's a fun thing to do. Um, if you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, what more is there to say about it? 
you can name your tarantulas, you can be attached to them, um, you can still work with them, and you can have fun with it, uh, and you can still be serious, and you can still uh, analyze their behavior and watch their behavior and record it in a more serious way. You can find things that they do to be cute, and that's just personal preference as far as I'm concerned, and whatever makes it fun for you, just do it. Some people, it's true, just don't see the fun in things. I have met some of these people before in my life, and they just don't think things are fun. They don't think things are funny. They think that some things are just a waste of time and frivolous and childish and blah, 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 blah. Well, I think they're missing out on some very important things that make life worth living. Anyway, enough of my soapbox. So this little one was labeled and sold to me as an Aphonopelma moderatum. Now you can imagine I was very excited to have a moderatum. Uh, they are a beautiful, beautiful species. So it's been growing for, gosh, it's almost going on a couple years now. It's taken a while and I, uh, had someone on Instagram say to me, that does not look like any moderatum I've ever seen. And sure enough, it's not. And I did contact the place that uh, bought it. I bought it from, and don't ask me their name because I'm not going to tell you. And they gave me a wonderful gift certificate. So I have an opportunity to um, get another tarantula. But in the meantime, I have a second of Phonopelma Hensai. Um, my other one that I have is named Erebus, and Erebus is a male, and this little one is a female as far as I can tell, but Erebus is a little bit older, so I don't know <clears throat> that they'll mature at the same time to create any babies, but I do have a male and a female. So I'm going to go ahead and give Cookie a juvenile roach, see if she's hungry. Sometimes she just isn't. Nope, she's not. She's just, she's just striking at it. So that's, that's indicating she's not hungry. Another thing is the lighting in here is terrible. I'm gonna, excuse me, go downstairs and get some more lighting to bring up into this room it was as I continue filming. Okay, hopefully that lighting is a little better. Um, what I have right here is a molt from Fiza, and Fiza is the um, Brachypelma hamori that has no fangs. Um, so he's fangless. I mean, generally, when he molts, he has fangs for a while, and then um, shortly after that, his fangs um, basically <laughs> break right off. And you can see on this molt, I don't know, maybe you can, but anyway, his fangs are broken off. They're just little nubs. And um, maybe I can get them out and show you. So they're just little nubs on his chelicerae. And I usually feed him breaking this apart by hand so there you can see how his fangs are before he molts basically non-existent and so he's known as fangless Fiza his name is Fiza which is a feminine name because he was um, sold to me as a female so and I was fully compensated for that um, and everything worked out great. So Fiza probably has little stubby crooked fangs right now because he just molted and he'll be able to feed himself on some freshly molted roaches, dubias, for a while. I'm gonna set his molt aside now that I have hair all over me I'm sure. That's okay I inhaled some earlier. If you want to know what that feels like it's like when you have asthma and you can't breathe. But I'm a glutton for punishment, so whatever. 
I just don't recommend it. <laughs> All right, here he is, Mr. Fiza. And let's see if I can get a little better lighting on him. And uh, he looks gorgeous. He's not a mature male yet. And uh, he's brachypelma, so he matures very slowly. Well, you have a while left with him. And he's doing great. Doing really great. So, on to the next thing. This little girl here is a Theraphosine species Rotan. And uh, she belongs to a friend of mine. She's in my care. Um, I'm raising her up and then I'm going to breed her with the male that I'm also taking care of. And I have a female of my own. Um, she's quite a bit larger and older than these two. Um, her name is Beleza. And she, um, she's just going to wait for this one and the other male to get larger. And we'll have pairings. Let's see here, what can I feed this girl? I'm going to give her a dubia. See if she's hungry. Okay. There we go. She's going to eat that roach. And uh, I'm going to refill her water dish. Let it overflow a little bit kind of dry in there and uh, move on to the next one and here's a little male Theraphosine species Rattan he's the one who is about the same age as the female that I just showed you and he's the one who will need to mature he'll probably end up breeding with my my female I'm not sure if he will mature quicker than the, the female here the one I just showed you or not, but at least there is another female who's older waiting for him when he does. I'm going to give him a smaller roach. See if he's hungry. Maybe not. All right, we have a no-go for him today. On to the next one. Here we have a little Abonatina cyane femur. Um, I've overexposed this a little bit because I want you to be able to see how pretty this one is and I don't want it to be too dark. Um, this is a male who is immature. I have a female um, also so I'm hoping that they'll mature, he'll mature when she's mature and we can have some babies. Well, let's see if he's hungry. All right, hopefully you got to see him come out. I'll also feed the female here, so if you didn't get to see him or if that was too blurry, um, we'll get we'll get the other one. You can see how pretty they are. They are a dwarf species. This little male here, um, actually, he's one of the tarantulas I haven't given a name to yet. So uh, if you'd like to throw out a name for him, you could help me name him. I tend to name a lot of my tarantulas after um, Greek or Roman or Hindu gods um, and goddesses uh, so he and the female don't have names I had forgotten that I gave the female a nice place to hide um, which is a good thing and very deep uh, log burrow she has here so hopefully we'll get to see her. We might not, but I'm going to throw this down there. Um, I doubt we're going to see her, but if we do, hey. So there's a roach. See it? Kind of blurry. 
Looks like the roach is burying itself. And I think that's probably gonna be- well, I see her feet. Um, I might be able to tickle her out. Nope. She's not interested today, for whatever reason. But I've refilled her water and give you a little peek at her enclosure here. There it is. She has a nice log to hide under and that's where she is, taking advantage of that. Brachypelma albiceps and this little one, um, let's see here. This is a, um, this one's unsexed right now. Um, and I think it's hungry. I will tell you, the Brachypelma albiceps, in my experience so far, they remind me of Brachypelma classy in their behavior. They are quite skittish. They like to run around when you open up their enclosure. Sometimes they are not sure what you're doing when you feed them, so they do try to make an escape. Um, I haven't had any escape on me yet, but they've definitely tried. Um, so. This, uh, this albiceps right here is named Rio, and this one, like I said, is unsexed, and I would imagine probably hungry, so I'm going to give it a small dubia, and I'm just going to drop it right next to him, and see, there you go. Okay, so just let it happen naturally like that, and usually that's where I have some success. Also with the classy, same deal. Let them discover their food on their own. Not the best for tong feedings at this age. So now the dubia is just kind of playing uh, dead there for a minute. This is one thing people say they don't care for when it comes to dubia roaches. They find sometimes that the red runners, you know, move more and they're a better prey item for that reason, but I have actually done away with my red runner colony and now I have mealworms and dubias only. It was just, uh, the red runners, I, I don't know, I, I prefer the dubia for many reasons, but I will go into that in another video. So little Rio here, just had a dubia and it's good to go. This right here is Alba and Alba is a Formictopus erratus. And this little one has quite the appetite. As you can see, he or she, uh, has not been sexed yet, um, is quite plump, um, possibly getting ready to molt soon. Uh, doesn't really look like it but these still have quite an appetite so I'm just gonna give this one a small dubia today there you go right off the tongs I really love the Formictopus genus and if you're looking for more information about them I highly recommend listening to Tom Moran's podcast. Uh, you can find that online. Also go to his uh, YouTube channel, Tom's Big Spiders. He talks in depth about them, about the different varieties and colors and where they come from, what they are like to raise. And these are particularly interesting because they take on adult colors when they are quite small. So you end up with this this juvenile tarantula that looks like an adult. And combined with their ferocious appetite, I'm sure you could just film them or, you know, take, take a photo of them and people would not know how big this tarantula is when they saw it. They're just fascinating and colorful. To me, they are colorful. This one has the gold showing up on its carapace. Gold color. Um, and they have a wonderful appetite. I love them. OK, 
Okay, here we have Paris, and this is a suspect male, Tlilto Cat, um, Kallenbergi. This one was given to me as a freebie, and it is quite voracious and has molted recently. So I think we're gonna get a really good beating. I'll tell ya, this is my tarantula room is quite small and my collection has grown and I'm crammed into a pretty small space here on the floor doing this feeding and it is kind of getting a little <laughs> a little too cramped and I've thought about moving to another room but I'm afraid of temperature control and things like that because the other room is down in the basement so if you have a tarantula room in a basement that has no windows you know um, let me know how it's working out for you um, I'm able to keep this room pretty warm, uh, but I think it would it would be a bit cooler down there. All right, here we go. Oh, well, better luck next time. He was just ready to kick and uh, ran off, and then the dubio went inside and has now become a meal. Here's a little Panphobedius flammifera. This one's name is Wren, and this is an unsexed, an unsexed um, tarantula. And this one tends to be pretty shy, as you can see, except at times very kicky. Most of the Panphobedius that I have do tend to kick hair as their first, just their first response sometimes when you even open the lid. So we'll see if this one's hungry, what kind of response we get. Oh, okay. That was uh, pretty nice. Thought maybe he wasn't gonna be exactly interested, but prove me wrong. He's very pretty. His carapace is like this. I don't even know what color we describe it as. I think a salmon. It's like a salmon pink and has a little bit of iridescence to it, but you can't see it very well. My lighting is still terrible for some reason. I'm trying to work on that, but bear with me, because, you know, I am kind of feel new again. Okay, maybe this lighting is a little better. I was actually using two supplemental lights, and maybe it's better to just use the big ring light and not use the small ones. Looks like we have a molt in here from the Pampobedius antinus. I'm not sure when this molt occurred. Doesn't look too old. Um, so, here's that molt. I'll be able to sex that one. I'm thinking this might be um, a male. Uh, for some reason, I seem to be getting a lot of male Pamphobedius and Formictopus lately. Yeah. There he is. I don't know if he's hungry. So, I think I'll give him some time. Try feeding him next time. Top off his water. This is my little Ophona Pelma Burica. Um, her name is Tonka. If you look back into my videos from last year, you'll find one where she was just a little squirt and she was in her little critter keeper and she was moving a bunch of dirt and she was just exhausted uh, and that one some people think it's cute so if you're looking for a cute video she's in it uh, she's become the favorite of some people because of that video if that's what you like um, and uh, let's see if she's hungry looks like she is she came right out for Oh yeah, there you go. Maybe wait to see the little bit of blue on her fangs. Oh yes, a little flash of blue. Isn't that beautiful? Alright. There we go. Looks like she's got a little bit of some kind of mold growing on this piece of wood here. We'll have to watch that. Here we have a little tarantula named Zen, and this one is a Formictopus species, Cotus, or the Dominican Purple. 
and here you'll see how they start to look like adults even though they're little. That was quite something. I guess ferocious things come in small packages. So let's wait a second. And this one, as you can see, molted not too long ago. So probably ready to eat. And if this roach moves, it's, yep, definitely dinner. And Zen is, of course, a suspect male. As I had said, most of my Formictopus and Pamphobedius are all suspect male. And this little one is Charlie. This is a Formictopus species green femur. And another fun little character who is probably hungry, which is pretty usual for this species. Okay, <laughs> we're not going to disappoint anybody, are we? All right, hold on a second. Let's try that again. I was not expecting that. I hadn't even touched the tongs to the ground yet. Hadn't even released the roach. The roach was quick and was out of there. Let's see, what's the best way to do this? Um, I'm going to put it right here. <laughs> okay, I think that was a pretty good feeding. <laughs> Yep, I will take that, thank you. I hope this one tips well. Jeez, treating the wait staff so poorly. Let's see if Charlie's gonna give us a little happy dance here. There's another roach in there for later, so next time I come back, perhaps uh, Charlie will be a little nicer to me. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool actually that was that was a great feeding response you can see a little bits of the flash of green on the femurs already it's gorgeous yep for Mictipus definitely one of my very favorite genuses Maybe you see a little bit of the reason why. Thank you, Charlie, for the show. Here is Dorian. And he is a Tlilto Cattle uh, Boggins, and I'm sure he's hungry. I'm gonna refill his water. Yeah, he's demonstrating for us how hungry he is. I'm gonna give Dorian a juvenile Dubia. There you go, it's a hungry boy. In here we have <laughs> the H. chilensis, and this one's a suspect male. Um, and this one's name is Memphis the chilensis. I don't know if he'll be hungry, but we can try and see. He always likes to leave. Are you hungry, buddy? Probably not. He's making it pretty clear that he's not hungry. You want this? You don't. Okay, well you gotta let go so I can take it away. Alright. No go on him. He's a cute little guy. Likes to come out and climb around sometimes. 
and is a very slow grower. This is the enclosure of my E. colonicus, female, and uh, her name is Freya. She's named after the Nordic love goddess. She has escaped before, went on a runabout and got into the closet, so had to chase her down. And right now, you can see this is her burrow entrance right here. She's um, tucked away and probably molting or just doesn't want anyone disturbing her. So I'm going to leave it at that. In this enclosure, I have a suspect male of Phonopelma by Coloratum named Aspen. Let's see if I can tickle him out. Now these got their color quite early. It was interesting to watch them molt and get their orange legs. Alright, well, that was a, a little peekaboo saying I know, I'm on to you. So I'm gonna put a roach in there and he'll either get it or he won't. I'm gonna have to dig it out. There we go. Well, now he's coming out, so let's see. Give him another one. All right, he took that one. So there we have a successful feed. Okay, so I wanted to be able to show you the two rows that were just fed. Um, these two top rows are what were just fed in this video. So that gives you an idea, just one section. Um, down here, we've got uh, babies babies all along here. We got this shelf. Um, we got this shelf. We got that shelf. Um, we've got um, this shelf here, that shelf there, and that shelf there. See there's a few here. This one. Those are snakes. There's the snot gurg. Couple on the bottom. We got bottom here, here, and here. So it leaves us with quite a bit of work still. Um, of course, there's some over here in the corner. Um, these, this is a potentially gravid uh, P. vitata, and then I have an, aphona, uh, um, an M. robustum and a couple of H. pulcherpes. These are getting ready to be paired again, and I have a mature H. mac, my P. metallica, and yep. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, in conclusion, I just want to add something else. I'm being very candid here when I say that I have an aversion to being in front of the camera. And I felt that I came a long way after two years of, of filming uh, videos for YouTube. But still, you know, when it comes right down to it, when there's a lot of other things going on, you know, it's so easy for me to, to try and cop out on making videos because of that aversion um, and so that might explain one reason why I haven't kept up. It's been easy for me to use that as an excuse but I will try to be better. I know you're not here just to look at me and I try to remind myself of that that that's not what this is about. Um, this is about sharing information and helping you learn and I don't need to worry about the rest of it. So. Anyway, until next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're not going to disappoint anybody, are we? <laughs> yes, I jumped. Even though I knew what to expect.